If you've made it to this video, you probably purchased and downloaded one of my laser cut kaleidoscope files. So this video is going to walk you through what's in the file and how to adjust the tabs. So thank you guys so much. Let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull open the PDF and Illustrator, which I have right here. Um, your title might be a little different. This is just sort of one of my live files to work with. And I'm going to walk you through the different artboards to sort of show you what you have here. If you just double click the PDF, it's likely going to open in a PDF viewer and you're not going to be able to edit it. So you'll need to open it in something like Adobe Illustrator in order to adjust anything in the file. So let's zoom in. So you'll see that there's two different designs here, uh, two graphical sort of designs as well as two different types of kaleidoscopes themselves. So we have this one with these turning sort of dials. You can essentially turn this to rotate the image in the kaleidoscope. And then we also have a wheel style kaleidoscope like this that has a larger acrylic wheel that can rotate. So there's going to be a part two to this video that's going to show you the physical construction of these kaleidoscopes, including how to actually glue these together and sort of fill the kaleidoscope image discs. But for now, let's go back and look at this. So the first thing you might notice is that everything has a variety of different colors, and I've done that and included a key so that you'll know what each item is. So the first thing you're probably going to want to cut is this little tab slot fit test. There's one here for both the kaleidoscope tabs and slats, as well as one for the stand. So you may want to grab those, either copy those into a separate file, or when you upload it, just move everything off of the, um, um, out of the interface in the Glowforge if that's what you're using, and just cut these tab files first. Now chances are, unless you're using a material that's very similar to mine, which is the 3mm Baltic Birch, you may have to make a little bit of an adjustment. If it's loose just a little bit, I prefer to just add glue. Um, if, you, if it's actually too tight, like you're not able to get the tabs in at all, or they're too tight and they're bowing or they split the wood, then you're going to need to actually adjust those. So if you want to sort of test to see how you need to actually adjust the slot height, you can come down to this extra parts, and this should be actually a separate file that you've downloaded. And it has a variety of different slab, slat tights, tightnesses, my goodness, um, that you can test. So you can copy this one in and see that this is a 0.125 inch slot height. This one's a 0.13 and then a 0.135. So you may want to use calipers and measure your material. In this extra area here, you also have individual and then just a grouped section of the slats. This is so if you want to add your own image over top or do your own designs, you can do that. For these ones here, if I zoom in and sort of double click, you can see that it's all grouped apart and I've done that so that it takes the least amount of cuts and saves you the most space. But if you need to adjust it individually or let's say you, you just broke one slat and you needed to recut it, you can come down to this extra parts file here and grab this slat. There's also some dust shields. They're not really lenses because you would just cut these out of clear acrylic, but they can be used to sort of protect the interior of a kaleidoscope, and that's something I've recently added. So in addition, you can see here are all of our colors and then what they go to for the different materials. So the yellow is anything you're going to be cutting out of the Baltic birch, including these ones here, which are not yellow, but I'll make sure that's corrected in the file. Um, these are your pattern engraves for design one and two. Your mirrors would be cut from this. You can also hand cut your mirrors or order them. Uh, veneer, this is optional. You don't have to actually cut any of the veneer pieces. When you see the second video, you'll understand why I've added them. They're mostly just decorative to hide any glue seams when you're like connecting together the um, clear image discs, and you can actually see that here. So they're sort of just hiding the look of the glue through the clear acrylic. Um, they're not 100% necessary, but they are like a nice thing to have, and you can see that one there as well. So let's go look at this first design, and I'll show you what everything is. So I've actually nested all of these items as much as I could in order to save you space, but if you need to break them apart, you can always grab them in here or use your direct selection tool. If you find they're like all grouped together, just grab them and hit ungroup. And you can see these are not grouped at the moment. So if I pull this over, nothing is actually connected. These little holes here are for your magnets. 
And if you can get a slightly larger magnet to fit, I might suggest that it will increase the strength of the bond. I think these really small magnets, which are 0.128 inches, they're, I think they're three millimeters by three millimeters. They're a little bit, they're not quite as strong as I would like them to be, so you could easily adjust that. If you would like to adjust your magnet holes, all you have to do is grab it, hit transform, and then increase the size. So let's say you were able to get four millimeter magnets. Let's see what that looks like. So no matter what my actual increment is here, I can type in four millimeters. And then let's see, it only did one dimension, so let me undo that. Make sure you have this linked before you do that, or make sure to type it in both places. So four millimeters by four millimeters. And you can see that should still work fine because this is gonna be glued against something else. It's gonna be supported, so even though these walls are a little bit thin, you should be able to adjust that. So now I will, after this, I can individually go through and do all of them, or there's one other technique which I'm gonna show you here really quick. So if you need to adjust these slot tabs, there's actually a really fast way to do this. My method would be to grab this section, ungroup it, and then I'm actually going to have to ungroup again, I believe, because they're grouped together. And then I'm going to delete these ones here. And you'll see why in a moment. Then I'm going to adjust the slot height for these two. Now you're not likely going to need to adjust the width because that's coordinated with these tabs here. The only thing you would need to adjust is the height and that's because the thickness of your material may vary. So in this case, I'm gonna grab that. Let's say that I came down here, I tested my slot height, it needs to be 0.13. I'm gonna come up here, go to Transform, Unlink Constrained Proportions, and then I'm gonna say 0.13 inches. I'm gonna make sure that this element is checked because I want it to scale up from the center. I don't want it to get larger in one direction. Then I'm gonna click out. That will have been adjusted. I will do the same to this one. And then I'll just go back and check this as well by hitting transform again, and you can see that's now correct. Now this is sort of just a little illustrator trick. I'm gonna grab these two. I'm gonna hit copy, and then I can go to edit, paste in place, or I can use the uh, keyboard command, shift, uh, and command, and V. What that'll do is paste them in exactly the spot they're located. While they're still selected, I'm going to come up to the corner until the rotate tool pops up, hold shift, and rotate. I'm then gonna copy and paste in place again, hold shift, rotate, do that one more time, and rotate. And then I would probably just group these and either move them over onto this one or I would just repeat the process. It only takes a few seconds. And you can actually do that same thing with the magnet holes. So let's say I did find four by three millimeter magnets and that's what I wanted to use. I would just come here, hit transform, link these, hit four millimeters, do the same for this one. And then I would grab both, copy, command C, command shift V to paste in place, and then I would just rotate them one by one until I've got them in the right location. So just make sure if you're gonna do that, that you match up those magnet holes with these ones because this is for the actual acrylic piece that is going to have the counter magnets that will magnetize to these ones. So make sure that you do that in both locations and that you adjust the tabs, tab slots anyway, in both areas here as well. So now for these, just note that these items are grouped. You can remove them, delete them, add them to one slat if you just had to repair or fix one of them. Um, and then we have the same thing here. So everything's labeled. These are all optional, optional veneer elements that are sort of decorative. We have our thinner acrylic here for the acrylic walls, our center acrylic ring, same thing here, center acrylic ring, acrylic walls, decorative veneer, main um, you know, uh, components for the viewing area, and then our magnets here. So you can see I have the individual magnet here, and then just like these ones, this is actually sort of grouped in a way that you're minimizing the amount of cuts that your laser has to make. So hopefully that will kind of help you. If you're struggling a little bit, I'm going to be doing a video on this as well. 
but I do want to show you the order of assembly page and kind of show you what I'm looking at here. So this is just sort of a reference guide to really quickly look at what order all of the parts go in for each of the types of kaleidoscopes. So there's now actually three kaleidoscopes, and I'll show you what this element is here in a moment. But we see for the first one, the um, binding post wheel style, which is this kaleidoscope here, it's actually relatively simple. You have your main faceplate cover. I would generally glue that to this one. And then here we can see our little dust lens. Those are optional parts. You don't need them. I don't have them in mind, but if you really want to keep any dust from getting inside the mirrors, you may want to glue those in there. You have all of your slots, which will, or your slats, which will fit into your slots. And then you have the same thing here. You have a dust cover, and this one's a little tighter, so gluing this one in will be a little bit more of a challenge, so be gentle with that. Um, your ring here that snaps onto the end. Your optional decorative veneer pieces, you only need one of these two. And then you have your disc wheel assembly, and then you might need a spacer post in between depending on the length of your binding post. For this design, same thing, there's an optional dust shield. You have your two... Um, eyepiece parts here and then this one is a little bit more complicated but it's not once you see it in the actual assembly it's very very simple this is an optional sort of decorative piece and let me see if I have an image of that you can kind of see it here it just sort of hides the seam and makes it look really seamless which I thought was nice uh, then you have the first wheel and let's see if we can look at here really quickly so you can see it's a layer we have one wheel two three four that's these here, and they fit over this. And you can see that that way these two can sort of turn around these elements here, and you'll see that more clearly later. A veneer piece to cover and hold the magnets in, and then same thing over here. Now the final style is very simple. Once again, it's the exact same starting pieces. You have your decorative face plate for your eyepiece. You have your first little ring slat, your slats, um, another optional hex ring that sort of slides onto the barrel and just creates that sort of decorative edge. And then you have these parts here. So very simple. You have this one, and then you need one or the other of these. You don't need both. If you use this one, you cut it out of clear acrylic, it will cover the whole faceplate and protect your mirrors inside, but you'll see sort of these slats through it. Or you have this one here, in which case you can change this circle or this hole to a different shape if you want to sort of hide the edges of your mirror, which is what this piece here does and what this piece here does. But you'll see that better in the assembly and kind of what's going on there. Now these are very simple. It comes with two circular tabs. They go through both layers. So this layer or this one, and then this one. And then you can stick in a glitter wand and use um, number 10 O-rings to hold it in place. And that way you can actually have a glitter wand style kaleidoscope as well. That one saves you from having to make your own image disc, so it's just an alternate option that you can try. Now for this one, I don't recommend doing a three um, equilateral triangle set of mirrors like this. Because the glitter wand is so thin, I would actually suggest you do a much narrower triangle or something, um, or a two mirror system. So if I actually wanted to change that, I can go to Polygon Tool, click once, change it to three sides, and just click OK, and then I can just adjust this as I want here. So I suggest doing a mirror system that's more like this, because then you'll really get the um, glitter wand to sort of fill the look, fill the whole eye area, or the mirror area of your design. And you can see that if you go look at other styles of this kaleidoscope. So if you're a little more advanced and you want to change the way these end shapes are, that's really easy to do. You would just adjust whatever polygon you want to do here. You can round the corners even by grabbing the direct selection tool, grabbing these, and just pulling them in, and they'll gently round the corners, which is a really nice feature. And then I can even double click here, delete that, get this centered, and then I'm just going to change its color to match. And that's it. So one last thing you might want to check for is if you ever find something in the file is cutting twice or you've added something or changed it in some way and you're having trouble with it cutting two times, click the object, 
and check your appearance panel. And that will show you if sometimes if it has multiple stroke colors applied. For example, occasionally if you change it here, it won't actually change it here and you'll actually have two stroke colors applied to it. So if this color is different than this color, there's a chance that you have two appearances applied to it and it's going to try and cut it twice. So that's one little tip in Illustrator in general. If you find you're having trouble with a file, that's something that you should always check. So hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of how to adjust these. Remember, you can always adjust these decorative face plates, change them, interchange the designs. So you don't have to cut this style of design or engrave this style of design with this kaleidoscope. You can easily cut these parts separately and just change the end pieces that you need. So I hope that helps you understand how to adjust this file. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you again.